Hi guys, Ron here. In this video, I described my project to remove uh, the old style single chamber master cylinder and replace it with the safer dual chamber master cylinder uh, and power boost from uh, classic performance parts. Uh, real pleased the way it turned out and I uh, just want to share a few little tips that I got along the way. For the 1960 to 1966 C10, uh, CPP offers three distinct um, power booster kits. Uh, 1960 to 1962 uh, standard, 1960 to 1962 with a hydraulic clutch, and then 1963 to 1966. So my truck's a 1965 and it falls into third class, 1963 to 1966. Strangely, uh, even though there are three distinct kits, the instructions come uh, for 1960 through 1966, and the first two pages are for the 1960 to 62 uh, brake kit. And you have to go to the final page, page three, for the actual instructions um, for the 63 through 66 kit. As part of the installation, instructions call for drilling a hole in the brake pedal approximately one inch below the existing hole. Here you can see the uh, brake rod attached to the brake pedal. The new hole uh, slightly lower from the original as described in the instructions. While the instructions are uh, fairly straightforward and pretty easy to follow, there's also a really good technical article uh, on the CPP website. Uh, the link is shown uh, in the description of this YouTube, and it goes through the step-by-step -step installation. And as a caption on one of the photos comes what I thought was one of the best tips, and that is uh, bleeding the master cylinder while it's on the truck as opposed to on a bench vise. After installation, uh, the Master cylinder and power booster angle upwards slightly. Um, and when bleeding the master cylinder, uh, the master cylinder should be nice and level so you don't uh, create any pockets for air to trap. Um, in my case, uh, with no load in the back of the truck, uh, the rear end is slightly higher than the low than the front and compensates just about perfectly for the upward angle of the master cylinder uh, from the firewall. And here you can see uh, it's just about level and sitting perfectly. But even if that wasn't the case, it'd be pretty easy to uh, jack up the rear end slightly uh, to get it level. And I think it would still be easier to do the master cylinder bleeding uh, while it's on the truck. These are the two lines that have to be disconnected uh, in order to bleed the master cylinder. With the uh, dual chamber master cylinder, uh, you have a proportioning valve which proportions uh, the amount of brake fluid going to the rear wheels uh, and the front wheels. Uh, during braking, more of the load goes on the front wheels, and so you'd like to proportion uh, the brake pressure accordingly. Uh, the other thing to note is, of course, instead of one brake line leaving, you've now got two brake lines. Installing the brake lines is a lot easier with the um, kit from CPP. It includes uh, all the lines you need to um, convert to the two-chamber system. Uh, lines that drop down from the master cylinder and then the uh, front line which goes to the two uh, wheels up front 
and then the second line which hooks up to the line which goes to the rear of the truck. There you can see the uh, clamps I got from Dan Chuck and um, they're held in with actually a mach machine screw. Uh, rather than put a nut on the other side, this cross member is reasonably thick. So I threaded the hole and uh, so didn't have to try to find the nut on the other side, which is a little bit awkward. Uh, you can just thread it in from this side. And on the other side, you can see I've done the same thing. Once the uh, master cylinder has been properly bled, it's time to bleed the brake lines. And I think most people uh, know that you should start with the wheel furthest away from the master cylinder. Now in my case, while the passenger rear wheel is the furthest away as the crow flies, it's not the furthest away when you follow the brake line. My brake line travels across the car to the right side or passenger side and goes along the frame to the rear passenger side wheel and then goes over the differential and over to the driver side rear wheel, which is then the furthest away as you follow the brake line. So here you can see the two lines coming down and the uh, front line teeing to the front driver side brake. The upper line is the rear brakes. The lower line, which is the front brakes, goes to the front right wheel. And the rear brake then goes up and then passes along the right side frame and goes all the way back. So here you can see the brake line uh, going to the passenger side rear wheel and then coming across over the differential and back over down along the axle to the driver's side uh, rear wheel. Well, I'm happy to report uh, the power brakes work fantastic. And uh, this project was a total success.